Hello everyone, welcome to Average Joe Watch Reviews. Today we have two special guests. We have Baby Madison and we have Josh. Hey everybody. From City Reviews. And this is our second collab. And this time we're doing it in Average Joe's living room. So, very honored to have you here today. Thanks for having me. And we don't have a script today, so we're just going to really just go off the cuff here and just talk watches yep. and uh, see where it goes. And you had something to say? She no? Wants to play with the microphone. Yeah. And did you guys notice the new microphone on the channel? It's the caliper version. It's a one of a kind. And uh, we're going to be using that today so that we can go back and forth here. So... What do you say, baby? She just wants to eat it. <laughs> I think I wanted to start off with uh, the Invicta brand. Mm -hmm. I do have an Invicta right there. Yeah, you do. You can't. You can't miss it. You can't. You can't miss it. And that might be one of the one of the reasons why Invicta gets so much hate is because they're just such monstrous watches. But what is your opinion on Invicta? Ah, <sighs> well. You want me to hold it? Sure. Hold the mic here. I've never actually owned an Invicta, so I don't know how much I can really speak to the topic necessarily, but everybody knows the Invicta brand. I think if you know watches, right. if you've been in a mall, you've seen the Invicta store that they might that might be there. Um, and like you said, first thing I think of when I think of Invicta is massive watches. And uh, not just that, but chunky and some sometimes their styling is is a little crazy over the uh, top yeah over the top gaudy you might mm -hmm. say and it's just not my style i mean they're they're a successful business a lot of people like them right so well you, you did mention the um when you see them at the malls uh have you ever noticed the price tags yeah that's um, true too what do you think about their msrp right yeah um you think that's a little bit um inflated and overrated and uh outlandish kind of like their style yeah it seems like <laughs> it yeah that's a good way to put it yeah, yeah. They, they definitely jack up the msrp yes uh, and i i think most companies do that a little bit but they go way they go over, way over the, the top, top. Yeah. so so what do you think is the uh major reason why invicta gets so much hate I, you know, I don't know. I've seen a couple of their watches that I like. Some of their more moderately styled pieces. What is that one, uh, that vintage diver one that they put out that I've seen other channels do? It's a nice piece. Um, is that the one with the Seiko movement in it? I think maybe. Yeah, yeah it's got the, there's like the Submariner homage. Yes, yeah. That one's actually one of the few that get a lot of respect right. in, in the watch world. Yeah, so yeah. They, they not all of their pieces are bad, I wouldn't say, but right. most of them are huge and, and gaudy and that, that type of thing. But um, She's agreeing with you, by the way. Can you yeah, hear her? She's, uh, she's mesmerized going, yeah. over here. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so... I, I did a video on my channel about why Invicta gets a lot of hate, and you're pretty much hitting on all the points that that I mentioned in the video. So, yeah. do you have do you have a pretty much do you have a topic that you find controversial that maybe doesn't get a lot of uh, attention because maybe I don't know people are afraid to talk about it or <sighs> not to put you on the spot or anything. Yeah, you know, I haven't been in to watches as long as you or other people that are probably watching this. I've only been really collecting for a little over five years now, um, and so I'm still learning every day. But I don't know, some one area I've wanted to delve into that I haven't gone into yet is micro brands. Okay. There might be some controversy with micro brands. Right. Um, in and just the the pricing for them as well. It seems like they've all kept a standard price, 500, 600, 700. Sometimes they get up even higher than that. But mm -hmm. um, so are you saying that um, some micro brands aren't really justified in their pricing? You, you think know, they're I don't a little know. bit inflated? I don't know. They the the ones that I've seen on other channels on YouTube, like. Mm -hmm. Not to, to mention all of them. I don't know all the micro brands, but some of the popular ones that I've seen and I, I like the looks of their watches, Zelos. Zelos. Right. Uh, Notice, 
or Nodus. Nodus, N O D U S. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. is that right? Um, great pieces, and I, I'm sure they're quality. And uh, but the prices do seem a little bit high to me. I don't know. I don't know what your opinion on that is or not. Yeah, like we know why certain watches, like your Omegas. Your Bolivas, your citizens, why they might be a little bit higher in price is because they got to pay for marketing. Mm-hmm. Marketing is a huge um, cost. That's true. Um, and they also manufacture watches on a much more higher level. They, they're putting out more volume, mass production, mass production, yeah. which means they have to buy bigger factories and whatnot. So those those prices are pretty much justified. Mm-hmm. When you look at a micro brand, you can make the argument that you know you have um, research and development R and D, um, so it takes time. It takes a lot of prototypes. It takes a lot of research, and time is money. Mm. Um, but they don't have the advertising costs. Yeah, they don't have the big giga factories. They don't have right. the marketing the budget that a bull of a citizen would have. Mm-hmm. And to make up for it. So, yeah, I can I, I feel you yeah. when you have a micro brand that's kind of outpricing some of the more popular brands. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think that definitely um, is, a, is a legit topic. Yeah, I'm definitely wanting to still get my hands on some of those micro brands. I don't know if you've had any experience with some of them at all. Well, I can tell you a micro brand right up front is a watch that I just got in. Uh-huh. Um, you want to reveal that? Yeah, we can reveal sneak this. Peek. We can do a sneak peek. And I'm not even I'm not even saying that this is an example of a watch that's overpriced because I can tell you right now. This is from Swiss Watch hmm. Company, and we'll do a little close up there. Yeah. This is their diver. Um, I'm not using them as an example in regards to pricing. Um, because this watch is the feel, the fit, the finish. Yeah. I mean, it's justified. Mm-hmm. But there are definitely some watch brands out there that, as you said, like they're pretty exorb- exorbitant in price. Yeah. You know? Just from what I've seen from watching others' videos, they seem quality, like the fit and finish, top notch. It seems like they use, like, a lot of times like a Seiko movement for automatics and different things like that but right. some of the unique design features sometimes they throw in like I think Zelos does a lot of with meteorite dials some unique things like that limited editions they're all numbered a lot of them yeah um, so I get I get the that their quality for sure but even despite that I think the price is still a little bit, a little bit up there, yeah. in my opinion. Notice or notice? I'm not sure how you say it. Yeah. Just a really beautiful piece. I'm really interested. Oh, was it that, in that vintage? Brand. Yeah, it was that vintage diver look? Yeah, yeah. That is a nice looking watch. Yeah. So I mean, as long as they're using Swiss movements, um, sapphire crystal, mm-hmm. 316 L stainless steel, they're mm-hmm. not taking shortcuts. They have decent loom. Yeah. You know, you can kind of justify some of these prices, but when you've got a company. And I don't even want to name any names because I could totally name one right offhand. Mm-hmm. I actually did a review on them, and I wasn't blown out of the water, and I actually gave a very honest review. So for those that follow the channel will know exactly who I'm talking about. But that company took some shortcuts. Yeah. And the, the price of the watch was like $200, but yet they used a quartz Swiss parts movement. Um, the loom wasn't that great. There were some f- um, fit and finish issues with it. So it was kind of a nightmare, mm-hmm. not justifying the price at all. So yeah. they're definitely, you, you know, we got to put these these companies in check, mm-hmm. especially these micro brands. But I think you got to keep all these companies in check. Yeah. I mean, I did a review on this watch here, the, the Luminox. Yeah. And, you know, I thought I was putting them in check when they came back and put me in check and said, look, this is a fake. Yeah. And they did, they did something that completely blew my mind, which was, was they sent me out a watch, a legit watch, awesome. to review for free. Um, but just to let you guys know that these watch companies are watching our reviews. Mm. And, yeah, that was her lunch. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Cut.
<laughs> I, I this is not necessarily a controversial topic, but this is a topic that I don't hear anybody talking about. And I wanted to know what do you think of ball watches? Mm-hmm. And why in the world do we not see much publicity about them? I don't see YouTubers talking about them. I don't see reviews. I mean, what is going on with ball watches? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. As soon as I heard about Ball Watch Company and looked through their website, I liked what they they were offering. I, I first heard about them through my dentist, actually, who goes to the same church as we do, and he's a watch enthusiast, too. And he right. said, you got to check out Ball Watches. I'm like, uh-huh. I never heard of them. Right. And uh, went to their website. And just saw the quality and the history that they have. Exactly. And it's just amazing. And then I, I'm looking for a certain watch, which is actually my Grail watch right now, which maybe we'll talk about in a, in a video on my channel. You'll have to check out. Uh, but I couldn't find any reviews mm-hmm. of the watch at all. And it's on pre-order right now, so I understand that. But there have been previous versions of it that right. have come out and no reviews. Right. Like, why isn't anybody reviewing this watch? There's other ball watches, um, but I don't know. You're right. It seems like a company that not a lot of people are talking about, and I don't know why. So my my theory, and I, I want you guys to comment below what you guys think, but um, my theory is, A, whoever's doing the marketing probably needs to get fired. Um Maybe or maybe that's just their um, style is that they they go more by word of mouth and they're not big into the big advertising stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, but they're not doing a good job getting the word out because I have personally looked into ball watches myself. Yeah. And I actually have one that I would love to get. And I want to post that um, uh, shot right here. Mm -hmm. Um it looks like a panda, but it's like a, it's a it's like a railroad type watch. It's got the black dial and it's got the silver sub dials. Mm. I wish it was more of a white sub dial so we can give it a true panda look. But yeah. it's still, if you t- if you take a look at this watch in the cutaway shot here, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful watch. And Ball is one of those one of the few companies that uses the tritium. Yes, they actually use. So so I mean, I, I don't even want to. I'm not going to show this one, but. Mm-hmm. Like Luminox, Ball actually uses tritium even like on the number. So Absolutely, like, yeah. But I, I mean, they're using really just as you said, the quality of these watches look absolutely supreme. But I think they're also chunkier watches. Mm-hmm. So they kind of remind me of Breitling in a way. Mm. Not that I'm comparing them to Breitling, but this this company does have heritage, and it. Definitely, they, they produce massive watches. They actually have a Batman version, Coke version. Um, they have Pepsi, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they have the Coke, but I know they have Pepsi. I know they have Batman. Yeah. And so I I don't know what the what the issue is. So please comment below if you guys have any ideas because I'm 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 completely clueless. Yeah. And I'm actually thinking about doing maybe a video on like the ball brand in yeah. general yeah that'd be you great. know and just doing like the history of it and showing off some of their watches because there really just isn't anything on youtube about it um so i have my watch collection out here and i wanted to kind of put you on the spot and uh <sighs> maybe have you pick out a couple that maybe catch your attention whether it's positive or negative as oh, you yeah. as you saw like so josh did a review of the exoskeleton um, and I'll actually put that watch up here in the cutaway. Um, and he wasn't very nice to it. <laughs> but, you know, I don't develop these watches. And a lot of these watches are watches that I've had for multiple years. So, and As you said, you know, you see the journey that you've taken in watch collecting yes. over the years. Yes. By the, the watches that you bought 10 years ago compared to the watches that you buy today. That is very true. Shows you how where you've been and, and where you're going, you know. Yeah, and that watch, the exoskeleton, is probably the most loudest watch. I mean, we get on Invicta, but this one actually makes Invicta look like a true classic piece. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything here in uh, the collection that stick out? As as I said, whether positive or negative, oh, guys, uh, I have got, thick skin. 
You got to see the collection. It's quite a sight here. I'm sure he'll throw up some video of, of the whole collection here. But, you know, the first thing that caught my eye as a piece that I would be interested in was this T. I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's a special watch. Average Joe, I'm sure, can tell you the story behind it. I'm sure he has already on the channel. But it's it's the, the piece that you can see. Um, I don't know if it's on your header. It's, a, it's on my intro. It's on your intro. So, yeah. Yep. It's on your business card. On my business card. And it's just a really beautiful piece. We'll get some close-ups of it. But first thing that caught my eye about it is just the sleekness of it. The, the unique rose gold color, mm -hmm. of course, is special. Um, and then that crown is, is uh, I don't know, there's something unique about it. It's kind of maybe a little bit larger than some watches yeah it's, but more, it's more pronounced it fits perfect it's, it's easier to grip there's no crown guards it, it, yeah it's super simple to wind it's actually one of the most perfect crowns right because i you know crowns i have a hard time with in a lot of cases especially when they have pronounced mm -hmm. crown guards or they're too small or they don't have any kind of grip to it this one really checks off all the boxes yeah uh, it's got that coin edging no crown guard yeah, um, it, and it does still look classic, even though it is a bit larger than a typical crown. Right, and you know it winds nicely. You can grip it easily, as you said, and you know just a simple T on there for T so uh, to 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 sign the crown. But I don't know this piece. We'll get some close-ups of it. I'm sure here the the case back, uh, super unique. Yes. Uh, and just a beautiful piece all around. And I can see why this watch is special to you. And I, I know there's a backstory to it, too. So, yeah. Yeah. This one, it was a just because gift from the fiance. Yeah. So, uh, and this is a watch that I wouldn't have picked out for myself. So, mm -hmm. um, kudos to her because she really picked out an incredible piece. Yep. Um, sorry, I've been covering your face, baby. You're the, you're the, you're the, you definitely steal the show here. So, you have something to say about that watch? No. Okay. You don't have to. What else? Uh, what else grabs your attention, whether positively or negatively? You know what? I'm gonna put you on the spot and give me give me one that really speaks to you and maybe it's not so much your style and your and you maybe want to question me as to why in the heck is it even in my collection. Well, there's a few of those. Here, great, great. Go for it. <laughs> First one is one of these wood watches. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never liked wood watches at all. I get the idea. I get the marketing ploy. I get the eco-friendliness of it all. But uh -huh. it's just doesn't seem right to me to make a watch out of wood. You know what I mean? So that one, I've, I've always wanted to own a wood watch. And now that I own one, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see why they don't produce these. Because um, they look cool in the pictures and the catalogs online and stuff like that. But once you own one, you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, eh. I, but it's in the collection now, so I finally have one. Yeah. Um, I can tell you this. I mean, it it feels like nothing. It's super yeah, lightweight. It's super light. And then, you know, if you got stranded, you could build a fire with it in the woods and that's true i mean warm it, it, it is eco-friendly as you said and you can use it uh in emergencies right. um where time doesn't really matter so it's so, okay so the wood watch sticks out to you what else what else you got there uh i mean i like a lot of your pieces don't well, get that's me good wrong, that's good but, to hear uh, uh, there's got to be another one in there that just well you did show show me this vintage belova here <laughs> I so, thought it was a woman's watch at first because of the size. Yep. Uh, so I that's a mid-70s Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, they call it the Whale. And it is an automatic day date. I put a uh, nice vibrant blue strap on it to kind of modernize it. Mm -hmm. but it goes well, the it, strap. It appears that the size is just not uh, Josh's cup of tea. And quite frankly, it's not mine either. Yeah. But um, I still think it's a cool watch. Yeah, it's unique, um, that's for sure, that oval-shaped case. I mean, even the crystal is domed. Uh, probably not sapphire, I wouldn't imagine. No, it's actually, um, I believe it's a plastic crystal. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's the kind that you would put poly wash on. Yeah, acrylic. Actually, I did use poly wash on that, so that is an acrylic. Yeah, it doesn't look in bad shape at all, no. It's not. I mean, for, for, for being, being a watch in the mid-70s. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I love Bulova. It's, it's been in a brand of mine that I've loved for years. So I said, you know what? Let me get a Bulova that kind of represents the decade that I was born in. Mm-hmm. And kind of see what that feels like, what it would be like to own one. Yeah. And since I've owned it, I've probably worn it maybe twice. Okay. Um, so. I mean, it's running. It's running. It's uh, everything works on it. Yep. A few indices are missing. Uh, the twelve and the six have disappeared somewhere. Yeah, it's not even in the case. <laughs> so maybe it's had a servicing. Yeah. So that that one really is okay. wild, wild to me. Anything, anything else that sticks out for any other positive or negative? I enjoyed just what you showed me with this uh, Hamilton. What is it? Khaki. That's the, uh, the khaki GMT, the Navy. This, the Navy khaki Navy GMT. This thing is nuts, and just the uniqueness of it. And uh, it's a forty-four millimeter case, so it's it's, it's a big boy. Yeah, but these three crowns that you get there you can't really find a watch that has that same yeah. style right and uh, everything is laid out nicely it's a compressor like diver so yeah. it's, not, it's actually a diver so it has that. 660 feet of water resistance mm-hmm. it's pretty neat it's a unique watch the open case back is is nice yeah and like you mentioned to me off camera you know they threw in the rose gold on the case back as well yeah, a lot of companies won't do rose gold on the case back because you're sweating, and if your plating isn't up to par, um, that's going to be the first that's going to start chipping. So the fact that Hamilton took that extra step and said, you know what, our rose gold plating is definitely far beyond anybody else, and we're going to put it on the case back itself, mm-hmm. shows that this is definitely a quality watch. And it's not cheap. I mean, this is a 1400 retail watch wow. uh, in U.S. money. So yeah. Um, you know, you expect to get that kind of. You don't expect true cuts with that one. Mm-hmm. Um, this one you can track a second time zone, but I will tell you that the luminous watch is absolutely atrocious. Really, surprised about that. I expect more from a Swiss brand. Yeah, uh, especially with Hamilton's heritage. I mean, you see Hamiltons in in stores that have. Omegas, Breitlings, Rolex even. Mm -hmm. So Hamilton gets a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. And being a company that's um, founded out of Lancaster, PA. Really? Yeah. Check out my video. I'm actually going to put it in the card up here. I did a whole history of Hamilton. Okay. um, Founded in Lancaster, PA. Nice. Just four hours from where we're sitting right now. Yeah. Um, This watch has a lot of respect, but the one big downfall about Hamilton is their loom. Huh. Which I hear through rumor, I, I I can't confirm this, but they say that the, at the, the newer watches have much better loom now. Okay. But this this luminous watch is absolutely Speaking true. Speaking of Hamilton, another one that caught me, caught my eye was the what is it? They call this the khaki field. That is the khaki watch. field watch. So I mean, this is a really nice piece that I've always enjoyed, you know, seeing on other people's channels and videos and. Uh, I guess the only downfall with these is is the, what was it? The water resistance isn't that great, or what? so is it a ten bar, hundred meters? You'd think it'd be more than that. I yeah, think. I guess. I mean, when you're looking at a field watch, you're not looking at an actual diver. So, you know, field watches are more for like being out in the wilderness. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you would expect that water would come into play, but. You're not going to put your scuba gear on and, and sure. go dive in it. Plus, this one got comes on a, a, a lot of them come on the leather bands. Uh-huh. So this is the factory band. This is a factory brand uh, band. Oh, yeah. And as nice. you can see, it's got the H on the tang. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but again, I would say the major downfall of this watch, being a field watch, is there's no crown protector. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the unscripted uh, chat, watch chat uh, with uh, Average Joe and. Josh here from J City. I appreciate you it's coming to the house. Good time. Thanks for having me at your house. Ah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. Um, as you can see, we become good friends, and uh, we actually uh, lend each other some more watches for uh, some more reviews. And as I said, um, 
be a little bit nicer this time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, uh, he's going to give an honest review just like myself. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And remember, Josh, there's always time to be kind to one another. That's right. Please take care of one another. God bless. And we'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. And one more thing. Subscribe to this guy over here. Thanks. He's got some good content. And you know what? Congrats on your 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. Yeah, that's really uh, a huge milestone. Something to be proud of. And he's actually going to be featuring another interview on his channel. So head over to his channel and see what we discuss over there. Thank you for joining us. See you guys next time. Thank you.